Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 357 Mag gel block test. And this test is going to be focusing on the Hornady 125 grain FP flat point XTP bullet. Now, this bullet is, uh, is just like the flat point 158 that we tested earlier, uh, just the 125 grain weight. And uh, again, this, these bullets are designed for use in a rifle. Uh, but I'm also going to test them out of these pistols just to see how they did. Uh, if you've already watched the 158 grain FP XTP test, then you probably already know what to expect. Uh, my only hope is that this being uh, 30 grains lighter, that we're going to end up with a little bit of a velocity increase for the pistols, and we might see that we get better expansion down into the, a little bit farther down into the shorter barrels. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let's turn around here and take a look at the loading and then we'll get on out to the range. So here's a look at our components on this one. Um, CCI small pistol Magnum primers, Winchester 296 powder and the Hornady bullets. And here is a good look at the loading on this. You can see how much of this bullet's down in the case. And here is a look at the flat point based on these, uh, that, that, that hollow point being different than the hollow point on the straight XTP. So, uh, all right guys, let's get out to the range, take a look at these. I'll have everything in a spreadsheet here and slideshows at the end of the video and let's go see what it does. All right, next up, we're going to be starting a new bullet. Uh, this is the Hornady 125 grain FP flat point XTP bullet. And this thing has a, a much smaller opening in the end of it. Uh, it's like a standard XTP, except the end of it has not been opened up as much. Uh, and it actually is flat, which seems like it would, would be better in lever action rifles. Um, this bullet is designed specifically for rifle calibers. Uh, and the 158 grain that we tested earlier, we had a, a delayed opening on, on this thing instead of uh, you know that three quarters of an inch that we see out of the normal XTP bullets, I think we were about two and a half or three inches in before we had significant expansion with the 158 grain. So that's something we'll be watching for with this one as well. Also, the lower velocities uh, out of the shorter barrel pistols probably will not generate uh, as much force to open these up as the rifle or the two longer barrel pistols. Uh, maybe better expansion than what we had out of the 158 grain just because our velocity should be a little bit higher uh, across the board with all five of these uh, these firearms. So let's see, uh, see what it does. So just a note, the, uh, the gel block has been shot up from both ends. I've got it turned around and set up pretty much where the cleanest portions left are actually uh, at the front end of this load, uh, the back end where the bullet's going to be running out is, uh, is kind of shot up with a lot of wing tracks, but we should still be able to get a really good look at how this thing performs. Velocity was 2132.8 feet per second. That's a, that's a substantial velocity. And I can already see from here, we've got that, that XTP star pattern, expansion pattern here, right at the front end of this wing track. So uh, let's go down here and see how this thing actually did. All right, so this is our wound track, and uh, you can see these little little pieces of lead out here at about three inches. Looks like we did get total expansion on this one uh, in that three quarter to, to one inch mark, uh, kind of like we were used to seeing with the regular XTP bullet. But again, this rifle, this bullet is designed to run out of these rifles. And here's a look at our final product. This thing's sitting at about 12 and a half inches of final penetration. Uh, it's laying behind that other wound channel, but a uh, nice big mushroom head on this thing. Yeah, I got too much glare from the top side. So uh, 
All right, we'll get a dugout there and take a closer look at it later. Let's go back and try the uh, Taurus six and a half inch. All right, so from our previous experience with the flat point bullet, I'm gonna expect more penetration and less expansion with this round, uh, possibly even getting us over into the second gel block. Let's find out. Velocity of 1452.1 feet per second. And pretty sure we got a catch on that one. Let's go look at it. All right, we got a better look at the wound track from this side. So here's our entry. And this thing tracks right on down through here. We did get a little bit slower expansion, but we still had total expansion by about an inch, inch and a quarter mark on this. Uh, wound track follows all the way down. Not a huge temporary wound cavity on this one. And we are laying out here at about 18 inches. Let's get turned around on the other side and see if we can get a better look at this bullet. Okay, so our entry with the six and a half inch Taurus bullet was right behind the rifle bullet. It's hard to see from this side, but uh, tracks right on through, passes the rifle bullet here at, at 12 and a half inches. And we got a final penetration of about 18 inches down here. All right, nice expansion on this bullet from the uh, Taurus six and a half inch tracker. And let's go back and see what the Ruger GP100 will do. All right, next up is the Ruger GP100 five inch with the uh, Warner D 125 grain FP XTP bullet. Velocity is 1389.2 feet per second. And I'm pretty sure we got a catch. All right, wound track starting right here. And we get pretty quick expansion out of this. Uh, I think we're getting better expansion out of these than we were with the 158s. Of course, we've got more velocity on these rounds where they're uh, about 33 grains lighter. Uh, temporary wound cavity. Tracks down through here pretty good to about eight to nine inches and then it starts settling down. And, and down then from there, we 22 and a quarter inches. So that's the Ruger GP100. And let's go back and try this Rossi RP63. So this is the Rossi RP63, three inch barrel, and the Hornady 125 grain FP XTP bullet. really close to the edge, but I do think that we got a catch. Velocity was 1236.2. I don't see where it squirted out the side. So let's see what we end up getting. And I was wrong. We did not get a catch. It did squirt out the side about halfway down the second gel block. So Rossi RP63, three inch barrel. Shot number No catch. Rossi 
Rossi RP63, three inch barrel, shot number three. Velocity was 1281 on that shot with three shot average velocity of 1249. Let's go see if we got the catch on that one. All right, this is our wound track right here. We do have some expansion going on here, but it's not as uh, not as much as it appears the wound tracks from the previous rounds. Uh, I've got the lead shards and fragments, and we're coming all the way down here at about 20 inches. We've got some uh, some activity going on. Looks like this thing probably starts to tumble at that point uh, as it slows down, and we get a nice temporary wound cavity here from about. 20 inches down to about 25 and a half inches. And this bullet has sucked back in the gel block to about 25 inches. And it does look like that we've got pretty decent expansion on this thing. So for a three inch barrel, you can see that temporary wound cavity there at the end of that run was, uh, was pretty impressive. So, all right, one more left. Let's go back and try the Rossi snub nose. So we did, so this is the Rossi two inch and we did get a catch with our first round from this, but I was not recording. So I have reset the camera and I'm gonna retake this shot, which means we will have two bullets in here for this Rossi two inch. Also means we're going to have a two shot velocity average. Average velocity over two shots of 1124.3 feet per second. The standard deviation of 12.5. And let's go take a look at these now. All right, wound track for both of these rounds uh, fired out of the two inch started back in this area. They track right down here into the middle. And I had a down angle on these the way I was shooting. And actually both of these bullets ended up, talk about a consistent performance. We're both sitting in here at about 22 inches of penetration and literally they are setting one right behind the other. I'd say the difference in, in overall penetration for these two rounds is probably just an eighth of an inch difference. So, uh, so there you go. I mean, consistency out of this thing too. So uh, yeah, we'll know what to expect. All right, guys, that wraps up the 125 grain XTP flat point. And uh, let's get back into the shop. So I've got these dug out and here's what we come up with. <clears throat> so the 20 inch rifle here on the right and the two inch uh, barrel over here on the left, as you can see, we just barely started to get some expansion starting with the two inch before it ran out of steam. Uh, we did get full expansion with the three inch, the five inch, the six and a half inch, and of course the rifle, uh, the 20 inch rifle. So this bullet actually the copper cup opened up almost all the way down to the base enough to allow the lead to actually separate from the copper on that. So uh, uh, pretty good results here. I'm going to I'm going to set these up beside the 158 grain, uh, and and we'll be able to see what the extra velocity from the lighter bullet did to expand this tip versus uh, the slower velocities from the 158. All right, guys. So here's our bonus content for this video. So this is the 125 grain XTP FP that we were just testing. This is a standard 125 grain XTP, and this is a 158 grain FP XTP that we tested earlier. So doing some comparison here, the difference here is 400 foot per second. So you can see the two inch had no expansion, maybe just a little flattening of the nose uh, on the 158 grain. 
the additional 400 foot per second for the 125 grain bullet allowed it to start expanding and start opening it up. Uh, more reminiscent, actually maybe even just a little bit more than what the three inch barrel had with the 158. And across the board on the 158s, expansion was retarded uh, with a flat point bullet, as you can see here. Now, this, this bullet was running 400 foot per second slower than this bullet. So this bullet here, if you look at it, the, the expansion was complete here, but it didn't drive it as far down on the, on the, the body of the bullet uh, until you get up to the, to the 20 inch rifle as compared to the standard 125 grain. So this tip design, the flat point tip design actually retards expansion a little bit. Even the velocity between these two was almost identical. This was 20 grains of Winchester 296. This is 20 grains of, uh, of H110. And I wish I had used the same powder on these with the exact same charge. There's not a huge difference between 296 and H110 though. So the velocities on these were really close with the differences being between 25 and 50 foot per second. So, you know, that, that's not a whole lot really when you're looking at it. So here's a, here's a good example. Look at how much farther down on the bullet the expansion carried with the standard nose, the original XTP nose versus the flat point nose. And, uh, you know, even even in the two inch version here, you can see, I don't know if I can get these to stand up on their side or not, but actually this one was about even and this one actually, the pedals actually folded back down past the base. And of course the, uh, the rifle rounds in both of these basically just completely flattened out to, uh, to almost nothing. This is actually separating like you saw in the video earlier. So, all right, guys. So that's the difference that the, the nose profile on these two bullets makes. And this is the difference that 400 foot per second of velocity makes. All right, guys. So there it is. The Hornady 125 grain FP XTP bullet. Uh, another solid performance. And I do have a slide coming up here right after this that, that has... Uh, these fired rounds set up beside the 158 grain flat point fired rounds and the 158 grain standard XTP fired rounds. Uh, you'll be able to do a little bit of comparison there. You'll be able to compare the 158s to the 158 flat points. And you'll also see that the 125 flat points having more velocity because of the 30 grains less bullet actually expanded uh, a little bit more in the shorter barrels. So picking the flat point bullet uh, in the lower bullet weight uh, allows it to be more effective in shorter barrel lengths. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, uh, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Matt from Kentucky Range Time. We will catch you on the next one.